The River Between. The River Between is a 1965 novel by prolific Kenyan author Nggwa Thiongo that was published as part of the influential African Writer series. Chapter 1. The two ridges lay side by side. One was Kamino, the other was Makuyu. Between them was a valley. It was called the Valley of Life. Behind Kamino and Makuyu were many more valleys and ridges, lying without any discernible plan. They were like many sleeping lions which never woke. They just slept, the big deep sleep of their creator. A river flowed through the Valley of Life. If there had been no bush and no forest trees covering the slopes, you could have seen the river when you stood on top of either Kamino or Makuyu. Now you had to come down. Even then you could not see the whole extent of the river as it gracefully, and without any apparent haste, wound its way down the valley, like a snake. The river was called Honya, which meant cure, or bring back to life. Honya River never dried, it seemed to possess a strong will to live, scorning droughts and weather changes. And it went on in the same way, never hurrying, never hesitating. People saw this and were happy. Honya was the soul of Kamino and Makuyu. It joined them. And men, cattle, wild beasts, and trees, were all united by this life stream. When you stood in the valley, the two ridges ceased to be sleeping lions united by their common source of life. They became antagonists. You could tell this, not by anything tangible, but by the way they faced each other, like two rivals ready to come to blows in a life and death struggle for the leadership of this isolated region. It began long ago. A man rose in Makuyu. He claimed that Gikuyu and Mumbi sojourned there with Marungu on their way to Mukuru W.A. Gathanga. As a result of that stay, he said, leadership had been left to Makuyu. Not all the people believed him. For had it not always been whispered and rumored that Gikuyu and Mumbi had stopped at Kamino? And had not a small hill grown out of the soil on which they stood south of Kamino? And Marungu had told them, this land I give to you, O oh man and woman. It is yours to rule until, you and your posterity. The land was fertile. It was the whole of Gikuyu country from one horizon embracing the heavens to the other hidden in the clouds. So the story ran in Kamino. Spiritual superiority and leadership had then been left there. Kamino had a good record to bear out this story. A sacred grove had sprung out of the place where Gikuyu and Mumbi stood, people still paid homage to it. It could also be seen, by any who cared to count, that Kamino threw up more heroes and leaders than any other ridge. Mugo W. A. Kibiro, that great Gikuyu seer of old, had been born there. And he had grown up seeing visions of the future and speaking them to the many people who came to see and hear him. But a few, more cynical than their neighbors, would not go to him. They called him an imposter. Then one night, when people were asleep, he vanished from the hills. He was soon heard of in the land beyond, in Nairi, Kiambu, Muranga, in fact all over the Gikuyu country. And he still spoke aloud his message and cried, There shall come a people with clothes like butterflies. These were the white men. Or there was that great witch, Kamiri, whose witchery bewildered even the white men at Muranga. His witchery and magic, before he was overcome by the white men with smiles and gifts, had won him resounding fame. He too, it was said, had been born at Kamino. Like Mugo before him, he had disappeared from the hills to the country beyond. He could not be contained by the narrow life of the ridges. Another was Wachiorai, a great warrior, who had led the whole tribe against Yukabi, Masai. As a young man he had killed a lion, by himself. When he died, at the hands of a straying white man, he left a great name, the idol of many a young warrior. The ridges were isolated. The people there led a life of their own, undisturbed by what happened outside or beyond. Men and women had nothing to fear. The Yukabi would never come here. They would be lost in the hills and the ridges and the valleys. Even other Gikuyu from Nairi or Kiambu could not very well find their way into the hills. And so the country of many ridges was left alone, unaffected by turbulent forces outside. These ancient hills and ridges were the heart and soul of the land. They kept the tribe's magic and rituals, pure and intact. Their people rejoiced together, giving one another the blood and warmth of their laughter. Sometimes they fought. But that was among themselves and no outsider need ever know. To the stranger, they kept dumb, 
breathing none of the secrets of which they were the guardians. Kaguchui kei musi igatu hakaguo ajeni, the oil skin of the house is not for rubbing into the skin of strangers. Leaders of the land rose from there. For though the ridges were isolated, a few people went out. These, who had the courage to look beyond their present content to a life and land beyond, were the select few sent by Murungu to save a people in their hour of need, Mugo, the great seer, Wachiorai, the glorious warrior, Kamiri, the powerful magician. They became strangers to the hills. Thereafter, the oilskin of the house was not for them. It was for those who lived inside. These were the people whose blood and bones spoke the language of the hills. The trees listened, moaned with the wind and kept silent. Bird and beast heard and quietly listened. Only sometimes they would give a rejoinder, joyful applause or an angry roar.